David, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thanks so much for hanging out and talking to us today. There's nothing better than Halloween every day. So you're doing the Lord's work, my friend. Halloween Daily. Every day we need a dose of Halloween. It's like, for me, every day I need a little yoga, I need a little mental health exercise, I need some exercise, I need to create something, and I always need a daily dose of Halloween. So thank God there's Halloween Daily News. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's going to be like our, our new promo now. You just uh, you just hooked it up, man. That, that is awesome. And um, and I know you don't have a ton of time today, so I'm, I'm not going to waste it. I want to get right into it. But I do have to tell you that I am a big fan and have been for many years, and I always enjoy your choices both in your performances and in so many of the projects that you've been a part of over the years even going back to stuff some of my favorites like the dark knight and sushi girl and um so this is a, a big deal and a big honor for me to uh, be talking to you today thanks man yeah it's 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 crazy for me to think about the fact that i'm just a guy that grew up in kansas you know sneaking his shangos and reading comics and dreaming about movies and loving movies. And now I get to work on some of the coolest genre stuff there is. And the fact that like people are taking Halloween and genre and horror in whole new directions right now. And people are really sitting up and paying attention when it comes to like studios. And they're realizing that it isn't just about the films. It's also about all of the ancillary cool stuff. I love toys. I love collectibles. I love interactive experiences. I think the fact that like, Universal's been getting so intense about trying to find ways of having like immersive experiences that tie into horror IP is like, I just think it should be in every city, not just in Orlando and, you know, Los Angeles. I want them to have horror nights, but not to say that there aren't kick-ass haunts and cool things in every city in the country. I just, I love it, man. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, and I love hearing that. And I know that I follow you. Like I said, I follow you on Instagram and uh, just knowing what I know and from reading other interviews about you. Um, so let's get into Late Night and and this character of Jack Delroy. Like I said, I always love your characters. And this one, I've watched the movie three times now, including last night. It was my, my third viewing, and I love it. And um, I feel like I can't see anybody else playing Jack at this point. And I think you were just born to play this role. And But I, I'm curious how much of the Jack that we see on screen was already there before you got attached to this film and, and how much evolved once you were became Jack. Once I came on board the project, we still had maybe five months, I think, before we started filming. So it gave me this perfect runway because I, there was no Jack inside of me other than the David connection, which to me is like a guy who has a job that has a public persona, but at the same time has a private life that tries to navigate, you know, difficult things, even when he has to be performing or doing press or whatever. So that was really the only kind of connection that I felt at first. Then I started diving into the work, thinking about how many sacrifices I've made in my own personal life, trying to like further my art or my career. And then I go... I just don't know how this guy would be able to, I don't know how to create a character that would talk or behave like a real 1970s like TV personality. So for me, I'm so lucky that we have, you know, thousands of hours of YouTube footage of Dick Cavett and Johnny Carson and David Letterman and Don Lane and all these great people that to me, I could watch and study and think about how do they, how does the, 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 the mask work? How does the exterior of the body work because the horror for Jack is all internal, right? I mean, yes, there's a little girl who's possessed by a demonic entity. And yes, there's kind of crazy shit afoot with this poor psychic who's all of a sudden become a conduit for something that may be a scam, but it could also possibly be, you know, evil presence trying to get onto this set. So it's like for Jack, that stuff is all cool for the moviegoer, for the making of the movie, but I needed it, the horror to be internal. So I just tried to create a really believable exterior as a horror host i mean as a, as a talk show host listen to me that's a little what do you call it freudian slip i wish i was a horror host uh that's a a talk show host who then inside is just struggling you know well i i love it and you know the whole aesthetic of it you know it nails that that talk show vibe especially from the 70s and of course 
It all takes place on Halloween night. And that piqued our interest when we very first heard about this project during its festival run. And then it got great reviews coming out of it. And it totally delivers on that. So was Halloween always a part of it? Was that uh, the Halloween setting always from the beginning part of it? I think that Colin and Cameron, who wrote and conceived of the idea, and they also co-directed it, they had this vision that, like, doing it on Halloween night not only was going to give us a ton of fun ways to, like, put cool props on the set and build a spooky atmosphere, and how fun it was it back in the day when, like, the studio audience used to show up all in costume, or you think about, like, let's make a deal or shows like that. We wanted it to feel like that. Um, but also the notion that, like, it's it's a Halloween special. Those are always the best episodes of anything that we ever watched growing up. So this is the Halloween special. And if you're a guy who's trying to exploit people's fears and vulnerabilities for the sake of trying to make some really captivating television, what better night of the year than All Hallows Eve? Absolutely. And, and it, as one of the characters says, you know, it is that night where, you know, the, the, the veil is thinnest, as we all know. And um, if, if things are ever going to happen, it's more likely on that night. So, um, and yeah. of, course, of course, all hell breaks loose as it goes on. Um, as you may know, I, I talked to your co-star Ingrid just a few days ago. And um, of course, we talked about Halloween and it, you know, it's always so interesting to me because, you know, she grew up in Australia and is not nearly as familiar with Halloween, just kind of what she knows from looking at us in America for in large part. Um, you now being, I guess you were the only American on in the cast. Um, did you find you had to kind of educate some of your uh, co-stars and, and some of the crew about uh, what what American Halloween is? It was really fun, you know? It's like they were teaching me about Australian rules football and about different shows and things that I don't know about. I am a big fan of Australian horror and some Australian actors and music, but I don't know a ton. There's one film that I love so much that's Australian. So there's like a lot of things that have come out of Australia that I've always been uh, a fan of. But as far as like cultural stuff, it was really cool. I got to teach them a lot about Halloween and Halloween traditions and us morbid Americans and why we love that whole month of October so much. And then... Um, Chicago style pizza because my character Jack Delroy is from Chicago and, and none of them had really ever tried the pie style Chicago style stuffed pizza so I went through hell with this really wonderful cast assistant that I had who was so awesome and she um she helped me track down a place where we could get authentic Chicago style pizzas one day delivered for the whole crew and cast but it was everybody the crew the cast producers um there was a couple of producers from America but other than that, I was the only American in the whole project. Wow, that's that's awesome. And again, when you watch the film, you would you would never even know it. I mean, you, I mean especially with the performances. They're such good actors, man. My cast was so awesome. Laura and Ingrid and Ian and Ian. I mean, uh, it's it's so good. And um, oh my god, um, um, everybody, everybody. It, it, it was so blown away by the level of talent that we got to play with. Um, and never did I feel like, oh, man, these dialects aren't working because they were just like such good uh, voice actors, too. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, the, the, the dialects, like you said, I mean, I never detected any uh, accents or anything. It was all dead on. I thought it was great. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned the pizza day because Ingrid, I always love to ask, everybody's favorite memory from set and she said that was hers the day you oh, met everybody the chicago so pizza. cool that makes me happy i'm glad that she remembered that that's awesome yeah she she loved it she said that was her favorite memory so now I'll, I'll follow that up and ask you what what was your favorite memory from the set of late night with the devil my favorite memory was the day that i delivered the big long halloween night monologue the opening monologue all the jokes about jimmy carter and um, Reggie Jackson and then it it kind of turns into when Faye said when our you know our psychic comes out on on stage and 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 everything starts to turn like that day that shooting that long monologue right into and here's our first guest you know this talented young man this psychic um that was really important to me because we had the live band playing and we didn't have a full studio audience that day, but we had some of our crew and friends out there trying to act like the studio audience. We had some studio audience members and 
Colin and Cameron were so excited and I was so nervous. And it was just one of those magical days of filmmaking where things really came together in a nice way. And everybody felt like we were on the same page and we knew we were making something cool. And that was the same day that one of our producers who also does a lot of art department stuff. And it was one of those small, tiny family films where it's like everybody's doing all the jobs, you know, he um, had made a, fake prop of like a vintage Fangoria magazine cover so that we could pretend to be reading it on set and took pictures together with it. And he put um, Suspiria on the cover, which Suspiria came out before Fango magazine actually went into publication. So it was kind of like this cool Easter egg of a prop. Um, and then I think the next day, this giant box arrived because I'm friends with the people at Fangoria. This giant box arrives and Fangoria had sent a ton of issues, vintage issues, mugs, hats, hoodies. All the makeup department flipped out because they're all horror like geeks. Uh, Marie, who's the head of makeup and hair, and then her whole team. They were so awesome. And they were like flipping out. It was really cool. That is that is awesome. I love that. And yeah, I mean, that would that's that's right. Fangoria was was launched in the late 70s. So that would that would um kind of alternate universe version of yeah, exactly. uh, Fangoria. Missed them by like two years, I think. Yeah. And, and you know, you mentioned that you want to be a horror host and, and I've watched you host the Fangoria Awards. And uh, I feel like with Jack, maybe, maybe you were able to tap into a little of those hosting um, instincts. And I, I watch a lot of late night TV, I mean, but, but over the years, and I think you really nailed the, uh, you know, the overall uh, aesthetic of, of what the hosts do. Thanks, man. Well, I think that what's great about horror hosts in particular is that their ability to infuse comedy and lightness into that space makes it so much more open to more people watching horror as opposed to those of us who are like hardcore horror hounds that are going right to, you know, what's the Jess Franco film that we're going to pop on tonight or something. It's like when you've got kids, especially, who are a little nervous about horror and then Sven Gulli comes on and brings you back or maybe you're nostalgic but you don't even know where to find the kind of old horror movies that you think would be fun to watch you know elvira joe bob or cremacia or uh this is Goulardi or any any of the, the 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 great legacy of horror hosts over the generations who've done it um so now i have this really creepy weird guy i hear about called dr fearless who apparently shows up at places and talks a bunch of smack about me like i don't know seems like he might be living the dream i feel like in an alternate universe speaking of alternate universe that would probably be my dream life like getting to go do a little like small town halloween parades as like the local horror host dr fear that's getting to do you know uh spirit halloween opening events with dr fearless getting to uh you know just do open haunted houses and stuff that would be really fun <laughs> I love it. I love it. That sounds awesome. We'll we'll have you here for our local Halloween parade. Uh, that'd be awesome. What town are you guys in? Uh, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, actually, on the Outer Banks. Oh, cool. Um, before I let you go for our last couple minutes, if, if you'll indulge us, what does Halloween itself, obviously, I don't have to ask if you celebrate, but what does Halloween mean to you, your, yourself? For me, Halloween is an opportunity for that, you know, six, seven, eight year old who was so intrigued by and scared by all the things that go bump in the night and the people in masks and the scary sound effects, a chance to like continue to relive all the excitement of that memory, as well as the tradition that goes back generations before we were even alive in celebrating things that scare us, especially when it comes to the land of the dead and things that live beyond. I think that it means, um, getting together with your friends and using all of your creativity, whether it's something you do professionally or just something you do as a hobby, putting together crazy costumes and decorating your house. It's just a, it's just a, a ticket. It's a green light for everybody who chooses to participate, to let their inner freak flags fly, to be as fun and creative as they want to be. And, um, and of course stuff our faces with as much delicious um, goodness as possible. So that's, that's it, you know. If you um, if you get a chance this week, latest issue of Count Crowley is hitting the shelves. If you're a comic book reader, it goes very into the um, mythology and depths of a horror local story in the in the world of Count Crowley that is all about Halloween. I really think you would dig it. I think some of the artwork that uh, Lucas Kettner is doing is particular the issue that comes out on um, 
I think it's Wednesday, April 10th, but um, this week, uh, I just, I think it's like, it says everything that I want to say about Halloween, this latest issue of Crowley. So please check it out if you can. Definitely will. And and I love that answer. I couldn't have said it better. I knew you'd give us a great answer. And our final question, we always ask everybody, your favorite Halloween costume that you've worn and your favorite Halloween candy. My favorite Halloween costume is, that I've ever worn is probably I got to be um, – we did the um, – we did the House of Wax this year, and I dressed up like Vincent Price from House of Wax. That was pretty awesome. Um, I did a really good Orange Gravello, Dr. Orange Gravello from Little Shop of Horrors one year, too. That was pretty good. Um, it's funny. All my favorite costumes are the ones that other people in my family or my friends wear around me. And then uh, favorite candy is always Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Really simple. I just like the individually packed Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and I stuff them in my freezer. Perfect. I love it. I love all those. Awesome. Thanks, man. Well, I think I think Jack Delroy is going to be a hot costume this Halloween, and and certainly for cosplayers at upcoming horror conventions. So I hope you're ready to see that. And I can't thank you enough for talking to us today. I know thank you're you. very busy, but this has just been awesome. Happy Halloween every day, buddy. Happy Halloween to you.